We have a little time before the butterfly. We're going to check out the Hall of African Mammals. I like just coming into it and seeing the majestic elephants down at the end of the hall. Yeah, when people think of wildlife, they really think of African animals first and foremost. Safaris, unfortunately. Exactly. You know. But you know, safaris are far more than lions and bears. Bears. Oh my. Well, yes. I remember seeing a bunch of different orcs at the zoo. If I recall, these are actually like, you know, taxidermied uh, I believe animals. so. Yep, they do not fly. And they don't stick their heads in the ground either. No, they might lie down and listen, but they don't dig them. They can run at speeds of up to 40 miles an hour. Well, I don't know, but they got a uh, zebra down there gnawing on it. And as the uh, skipper on the Jungle Cruise would say, you know, isn't it nice that the uh, lions are protecting that zebra? Oh, look, there's a friend visiting. Oh yeah, there's there's kind of lizard kind of way up there. Yeah. Is he a spy? I think he's just lying around. Probably stunning. Yeah, anyway, let's check out the next exhibit. <laughs> yeah, three of them. I don't remember all three of the names, but Ed was definitely one of them. I just remember looking at Ed, like, Ed? <laughs> no, Sensi, well, we got here, you know, Bonzi, Sensi, I don't know, but Ed, everyone remembers Ed. Of course everyone remembers Ed, and then Whoopi Goldberg voiced one of the uh, hyenas. No, not Ed. But don't quote me. I, I, and Shenzi's definitely not one of them. But I, I don't remember the other one. Here, um, here's antelope. Our sable antelope. Where the deer and the antelope. Yeah, wrong continent. Yeah, exactly. And some birds in there too. Yeah, I do like these exhibits because they, they have uh, some trees and plants and other birds. It's not just some by themselves. Flora and fauna. Yes, yes. I was using that earlier. Yeah, maybe a lynx? Looks like some sort of wasp nest up there, or maybe a bird nest. I, I looks more like a yeah, it could be a swallow. I, I don't know. This is the greater kudu, as opposed to the lesser kudu that everyone knows. <laughs> Indeed. It looks a little bit like Zazu, but I think I think Zazu. What kind of bird is he? <laughs> Well, I don't know, but it does look, look a little bit like Zazu. Maybe it's one of Zazu's brothers. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. It's a throwaway line, but no one talks about it. Yeah, yeah probably gu Guereza? I, I don't know. But anyway, a monkey type creature. Primates. Uh huh, primates. Some is very easy to Cape Buffalo along with the elephant. I always loved giraffes as a kid. They're, they're closely related to horses, you know. Mm -hmm. That they are. That they are. And it looks like... Like, uh, you know, like many animals, they adjust to their environment. So if you need a long neck to get to where the food is, you're gonna evolve to have a long neck. It's see or tell. Or, 
Honey Badger. Of internet fame. Small man, not a word. I'm not sure what word it's on. This is the black rhinoceros. It's too bad that poachers get them just for their horns and stuff, and elephants for their tusks. There's a news event last week. There's some scientists in China who are 3D printing um, copies of uh, rhino horns, and they kind of flood the market and just ruin the. Just well, that's good because don't like a lot of the Chinese think it's like a fertility drug or something. I think you're thinking about aphrodisiac, but I'm not sure. Chinese okay. medicine is. I don't. I deal in Western medicine. <laughs> And so this is the this, this group of scientists using the uh, 3D printing for purposes, plans to flood the market and drop the demand. In. Bongo! It looks like a large of a deer fan. The largest antelope species. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks like an antelope because of those horns. Oh, they're definitely yeah. I think one is bone. Shed. One yeah. shed every year. Yeah. One I would say that the those horns are not shed. Well, antlers, I believe. Are shed yeah. Like the moose and the deer. Mm-hmm. Here's Looks like a silverback, a western lowland gorilla. Not a silverback, but a friend. Well, George is a curious monkey. This is a curious gorilla. Well, unfortunately, uh, reading comprehension is not a prerequisite for entry. Chimpanzee. There's some, uh, it's like parrots up there? No, if I wasn't. If we weren't in the African Hall, I'd say this looks like a South American rainforest. Well, I don't know if they're macaws in Africa. I think that's more of a South American thing again. So I remember in the TQ room, yes, let's get some Disneyland knowledge in here. And they go, and they have a joke like, and it's like, no, no, because they're macaws. <laughs> yeah. Meg song goes on. Sititunga. Another like antelope type creature, yep. The first papyrus swamp is in a, a very little swamp. I see little like, buzzards in the background. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't, or, I I don't know if they're sound. buzzards. There's, there's something. And finally, hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. Yeah, hi uh -huh. hippos may look very benign, but. Okay. Especially if you're approaching their calf. I think yeah. that's what the baby hippos are called. Yeah. Like an, an alligator may want to prey or a, a crocodile. Because now, remember, American alligator, crocodiles are in Africa. A crocodile may want to prey on the young, but I think the bite force of a hippo would be so strong it could like snap the crocodile. I think I read that somewhere. Just in general, don't approach animals young, especially if they're feeding. But just like reading Rainbow says, don't take my word on it. <laughs> Either way, change your preposition here, there. Curiosity card? Not today. That is all folks from the uh, Can I pay you tomorrow for a burger today? Anyway, that's, yep, that's the Hall of Mammals. 